just talk to you because <laughs> let me just talk to you I'm gonna give you just three scriptures you better write them down um, they are quite um, they're quite intense scriptures so I'm gonna talk about those three scriptures then then I'm gonna sit down then you go home all right so yeah. The first one is the, the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 26. The book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 26. Right? The second one will be the book of 1 Kings, chapter 16, verse 34. Then the third one will be the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. No, chapter 54. 54 verse 17. All right? I hope that I've kept them well in my head. You know, uh, they say as you grow up, uh, your, your mind does not become sharper. I refuse that. Uh, yeah, I, I refuse that. So, okay. Do we have a Bible to read? Can we get some Bible somewhere? All right? I don't see it. I'm seeing some rainbows or whatever. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Is this the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 26? Chapter 2, verse 26. There's no 26? Are you sure? The last one is 24. Okay. All right. If it's, it's the last verse, yeah. Let's, let's, it should be the last verse. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. It's 6. 626. All right. 626. 626. Okay. Now, give me another transla translation. What translation is this? It's what? Okay, go to New King James. Oh, that one is okay. Right. Then Joshua charged them, which means the people of Israel, at that time saying... Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds the city of Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn son. And with his youngest, he shall set up the gates. Did you hear that? So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout all the country. He said that, Jericho must not be rebuilt. Any person who rebuilds it, his firstborn son will die at the foundation, and his firstborn son will die as he's building the gates or the walls of the or the walls. Okay, right. So then go to the. I hope you you kept that. Then go to First Kings chapter sixteen verse twenty four. First Kings chapter sixteen verse twenty four. And he bought the hill of Samaria. Is this the one? Verse 34. 34. 34. Okay. 
In his days, Heel of Bethel built Jericho. Right? I hope you follow. Built Jer Jericho, and he laid its foundation with Abiram, his firstborn. In other words, when he built the city, his firstborn died. With his youngest son, Segeb, he set up its gate according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua the son. Now, I wanted to get me a translation that will translate this because uh, give, me, give me NIV or the other newest, newest something on this one. Right? Okay, in his days, Heel, the Bethelite, uh, uh, built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of the life of Abram, his firstborn. Set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son, Segeb. In other words, his sons died, right? Okay, now go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. 54, verse 17. It sounds like Bible study today. If you don't come to Bible study, I'll, I'll make Bible study on Sunday. <laughs> no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let's start from verse 16 to get it right. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth the instrument of, for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. God says, I've created the spoiler to destroy. Or the other translation says, I have created the destroyer. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Continue. Oh, there's, there's nothing. I think there's, is, there's nothing after that. Uh, if there's nothing, okay, let's say amen because there's nothing else to say. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, speak to us. Amen. Be seated. I, I, want to, I want to speak to you that everybody has a foundation. Are you getting me? Everybody has what? Everybody has a foundation. There are different types of foundations. Everybody has a foundation. Where you have been born is your foundation. Where your family is situated is your foundation. The things that may happen where you were or where you were born or where you grew up you become your foundation. Are you hearing that? The language you speak become your foundation. Sometimes you have to break out of your language in order to access certain heights of life because your foundation is limited. Uh, I'm not sure you get what I'm trying to say to you, okay? I'm trying to say to you that you can't travel the world with Africans. You are already limited. You can't travel the world with Zulu and Kosa. You are already limited. That is your foundation. But sometimes you have to break out of your foundation in order to open yourself to other new possibilities in life. That's how life is, okay? So, but we thank Jesus that we have a foundation in the spirit, which is we can speak about maybe at other times. But I just want to say to you, everybody has a foundation. Everybody comes from somewhere. And everybody has been physically born from somewhere. And it matters where you have been born. It matters the situations in which you were born. 
If you see a child smoking at 14, it's a foundation thing. Where was he born? Where did he see that? If he's eating drugs at 10, check the foundation, check the situations, check the environment, check the things, uh, you know, that you, he has been born, you know, around and all of that, okay? So life, life, is, life is like that. It matters. It matters where you come from. It matters what happened where you come from. Do not look down on those things because they are very important. They make you uh, who you are today. And where you come from sometimes... I'm, I'm not saying always, sometimes it can hinder your life or accelerate your life. It really depends. It, it truly depends. Are you hearing that? So we are coming in times in South Africa where your color meant something, where your color could block certain doors and things like that. It matters, it matters your foundation, it matters your accent, it matters, this is life, guys, this is life, this is the world, we are not in heaven. You see that? We are not in heaven. We are not in heaven. You see some other people bleaching themselves, sometimes they are trying to deal with certain things. They are trying to move certain, you know, some way. And all of, because sometimes, sometimes life becomes fair. And some people feel that they have to do some alterations. But I want to tell you that if you're in Christ, you don't need to do alterations. Because when the favor of God comes over your life, it does not matter what color of your skin and what height and how fat and how short and how, you know, it really does not. When, when the light of God comes upon you, uh, uh, it's a totally different story. But it does not mean that we should uh, negate or we should uh, kind of like uh, 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 neglect the, the, the places where we were born and the things that happened to us. The Bible tells us a story. A story that when Israel were going to Egypt, when they were going to Canaan, right? The first country that they had to fight or the first war uh, for them that they had to conquer was, the Jer was Jericho. And then God said to them, I don't want you to touch anything in Jericho. I want you to kill everybody. Kill everything, kill every child, kill everything in Jericho. Just wipe everything away. And I, I, I want you to take the gold, the silver, and not, and not take it away with you. Just leave everything. The only person that was saved was, was uh, uh, um, uh, the halot, was, the, uh, who's the, was, was Rahab. Rahab, because uh, she hid the spies and she protected the soldiers of Israel and then and then and believed in the God of Israel and she was saved that way, right? So, but 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 then 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 the Lord had had Joshua pronounce a curse over the land of Jericho. He pronounced a curse over of over the land of Jericho, and he said, "No one should rebuild Jericho." If that man will decide, will see the country, that the country is in, is in chaos, the city is in chaos and is in ruins, and he said, then he said, if he tries to build it, he will build it at the cost of his firstborn son. And if he tries to, to continue to build the walls or to build the gates, he will build the gates at the cost of his second son. Are you hearing that? And guess what? Many years pass by. Many years pass by. Many years pass by. But there's uh, something is amazing about the environment. Something is amazing about the soil. Something is amazing about the ground. That people were born and, and generations passed, but uh, that the words that were spoken on the ground did not pass. Yeah. Did, are you following me? Yeah. I must tell me if I'm boring you. The words that were spoken to the ground did not pass. They were spoken not to human beings. They were spoken to the city. They were spoken to the city that nobody should rebuild the city. Certain places carry certain environments. Are you hearing me? 
That's why you find a certain place has a lot of drug lords, drug lords, drug lords. And in other places, there are no drug lords. And there's a certain rest. In a certain place, there are prostitutes, prostitutes everywhere. But you don't see prostitutes in other places. In other places, there are, there's more crime than other places. So each place carries a different environment according to the ground. Uh, this message maybe is confusing. So are you hearing me? You see? So in the world, there are demarcations in the world. And different activities are taking place in, in, in those demarcations as well. It's not everything that happens at the same time. Sometimes you, sometimes you need to move to a certain place for, for certain things to happen in your life. Because, are you hearing this? Because this life is about environment. So the environment of the city of Jericho was... Uh, uh, was, was now kind of like, you know, it was cursed. So this man had a good intention. He wanted to build the city. Is it, is it okay to build the city? It's good. But he had no clue of what was said and what was spoken. Then he built it. The day he made a foundation, his firstborn son, he got a message, his son is dead. He did not realize what was happening. He woke up the next day and wanted to build the walls or build the gate. Then his second son died. There's power in words. If somebody curses you, do not just say, do not just brush it off like that. You have to deal with it. If somebody says that you'll never make it in life, you will be nothing like that. Do not just say, oops. D don't say that. There's power in words. In fact, in Hebrews, they believe that words carry units of power. They carry units of power. That's why you see uh, a man called Jacob, and, and uh, his name means a cheater, and he cheated his brother, and he stole, the, stole his blessings. That's why you get a man called Jabez, which means sorrow, and is crying. And he says, God, he says, God, may, that you may bless me and enlarge my territory. Yeah. That's why you see a man called David. David means, uh, uh, it, it means, it means, David means the beloved of God. It means the beloved of God. In other words, the favorite of God. David, David committed adultery. He was supposed to be stoned. All the people that committed adultery in his time were stoned. But David was never stoned. How do you explain that? Are you here? I'm trying to say to you. Then you get a name called Jesus. His name means a savior. His name means salvation. And what did he do? He saved us. Then you get a man called Lazarus, which means whom God has helped. That's the name Lazarus. What happened to Lazarus? He is dying. He is dying and is dead for three days. And he's, rot he's, he's rotten. It's four days and, and he's smelling. But guess what? But he came back to life because his name is whom God has helped. And God could not leave him in the ground eaten by the, the, by the maggots. So are you hearing me? So, I, I, I'm trying to say to you that words are very important. Words are very important. Words are very important. You get this everywhere. Why would God change the name of Abram to Abraham? Why would he change it? Because words are very important. So, God says, if you're going to go with me, if you're going to travel with me, if the promises that I promise you are going to be fulfilled, God said, I have to change your name. And what is the name? Word. Your name is in words. So he changed his name and he became Abraham. He became a father of many nations. He was barren, but his name carried the fulfillment of what was going to become in his life. Are you hearing me? In other words, he is barren, but his name 
carried the breakthrough of what he needed. His name carried the breakthrough of what is needed. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? Sometimes you have to change the words you speak. You have, you have to change the expression. Sometimes you have to change the way you speak about yourself. Sometimes you have to change the way you speak about your situation. Sometimes you have to change the train of your thoughts. Sometimes because life begins at the thought. And how did he prophesy over the land that nobody must build? Because God puts thoughts into the, into the mind of Joshua or the spirit of Joshua. And Joshua began to express the thoughts that God put in his mind. Are you hearing me? So if somebody is speaking especially somebody of authority if somebody is speaking to you that you're not gonna make it that you're not and, and sometimes can i tell you something sometimes there are words that are not just speaking spoken to you but they are spoken to your mom they have been spoken to your mom you are not married because something has been spoken to your mom you, you, you know something has been spoken to your father you don't even know that you are fighting your father's devil or your mother's devil but now you need to wait Wake up. I wish I could talk to you. Life is very spiritual. Are you hearing me? Nothing happens by mistake. You don't get hit by the car by mistake. You don't get barren by mistake. You don't be a drunkard by mistake. You are not on drugs by mistake. It's not just mistake. There's no divorce by mistake. Everything in this life is spiritually planned and it manifests in the physical, but it needs people that will understand that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. That every tongue that rises against you, that you shall condemn it. Sit down. He was working on the curse ground, but he did not know. Curse will not forgive you. Curse will not say you don't know. Are you hearing me? There are people in, in families, they are suffering things they don't know. They are suffering things they don't know. They, they just worry why things are not coming the way I want. Why? Why is this? Why is this? Why is that? You know that when you live life with whys, it means something has to be fixed. Something has to change. If there's a certain area if you're in your life where you have whys, it means we have to deal with that. I don't know why God is coming back to this thing all the time. I've been preaching it for a long time, but it's still strong in my spirit. I'm saying that if you come in your life and there is a hindrance in certain progress, there's hindrance. Anytime you desire this direction and nothing is coming from that direction, it means that somewhere, somehow, in your generation past, in that area, in that anger, something was manipulated so we need to go there by the word of God and go and speak life until the word of God goes to the skeletons of the people of your family that you don't know and begin to reverse the words I wish I could talk to you. I wish I could talk to you I want to preach this until the bones of your grandfather the bones of your great 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 grandmother until they are shaken until there's something that is broken in the name of jesus christ until your dna is spiritually changed in jesus mighty name You know, God was very careful. Even when he brought Jesus, God had to choose which family. He had to choose which lady that had to be pregnant with Jesus. He had to choose that David must become the son of of David. Amen. 
because there were so many things that God invested in David spiritually that would give Jesus an access and an advantage. I wish I could talk to you. So Jesus could not become the son of Ahab. Because God did not work much with Ahab. And Jesus could not become the son of Saul. Because Saul was not that flexible for God to work with him. But David, who said, do not take your spirit away from me. David who said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that is within me. It means all the generations to come. All the Christ to come. All the Jesus to come. about your hindrance and say I'm coming out of this think about something that is redundant in your life and say I'm coming out of this our God is gonna surprise you you're gonna be the first one in your family to experience a breakthrough in that area if it's blocked in your family I'm yet to tell you in the name of Jesus that there's no weapon formed against you that shall be able to prosper hey. I'm not organized today. Just sit. Are you hearing me? Now, I want to, I want you to check. Listen, I want you to check this. So God has to make sure that the Messiah has a strong, rich, spiritual background that even when he dies, that he will rise again. But his great, 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 great father. That the blind man. Okay. Can you see that it's only the blind man that is blocked physically. That was able to see Jesus spiritually. It's Bartimaeus who said. He said, Jesus. Son of David. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm trying to say. He, he, he did not say Jesus, son of Joseph. Everybody knew the son of Joseph. But a blind man who does not know how to see, his spiritual eye was open. He saw Jesus, the son of David. He was able to trace Jesus to David. So, sit down. But the amazing thing is this. Is that D David is a father. The first, the first son. The first son. Is it Abirim? The first son that died. His name means exalted father. The second son that died. His name means exalted. Now, look at this. David as a father. As a father. You know what happened? He prophesied about his great, 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 great son, Jesus. He prophesied resurrection. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit, come sit with me until your enemies are on your feet. And as the Lord said to my son, and he even said that that the Lord will not allow him, Christ, to see corruption speaking of his resurrection when Jesus arose it was not just prophets that had the power but it was the father David yes, Lord. David spoke about it Amen. David spoke about the resurrection of Christ though he did not know but maybe in his spirit he just knew there's a special baby that the Lord said will come out of my loans. And then he rose. But let me not waste your time. But I wanted to check something here. Let's, let's start from the 16, verse 16, the same verse, 16 day. I want to show something. Then the, uh, can, you, can you give me, what's the, is this, uh, give, give me, give me uh, uh, NIV. Give me NIV. I want to show something here. 
Now, let, let me empower you. Okay, see, it is I who created what? The blacksmith. The blacksmith are the people who create weapons. You know, they make, like, weapons, right? Who fans the coals into flame. You know? Yeah. And forges a weapon fit for its work. It is I who have created the destroyer. I'm, I'm not sure you get what I'm trying to say. God said, it is I who created the destroyer. What is a destroyer? It's a thing or a person that destroys, that does not build. So God says he can destroy. If you trust that God can destroy, you know what the Bible says? It says that the Lord has anointed Jesus Christ. It speaks about that he has anointed him to to, to, uh, 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 to, 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 to destroy the works of Satan. So now God is not the destroyer of good things, but God is the destroyer of bad things. If you trust that God can destroy, if, if you trust that God can bring destruction to your destruction, if, if you trust that God can destroy the disease, that God can destroy poverty, that God can destroy lack, God can destroy bad luck, God can destroy curse. He says, the destroyer. But look at this. Then he says, continue verse 17. Then, th then he says, after having understand, understand that God can be able to destroy, because sometimes we think that God is powerless. He says then, this is what you have to understand. No weapon, 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 weapon formed against you will prevail. Go back, will prosper. No, go back to will prosper. All right. It says no weapon. He says there's no weapon. He says there is. He says there's no weapon formed. No weapon formed against you. That shall prosper. Did you get that? Now, I don't know how many weapons that have come your way. But it, it does not promise that it won't stab you. It won't hurt you. It may hurt you. It may frustrate you. It may bring you to depression. Are you hearing that? may bring you to stress because it's a weapon it's not a toy so you get it this is a weapon if it's a knife it can cut you all right but it says that it will not prosper what is it to prosper it won't fulfill the reason why it was short to you do, do, do you get it? It will not fulfill the purpose for which it has been sent to you. But can you have sleepless nights? Yes. Yeah. Can you cry tears? Yes. Can cry tears? Yeah. Can you think about suicide? Yes. You may think about suicide. Can you feel that life is worthless. Yes. All those things may happen. Why? Because it's weapon. Because it's weapon. It can cut. It can cut you open. But it can fix whatever cutting that the weapon has done to you. God can sew you back. So are you getting that? So, you need to understand, we, 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 uh, when believers speak about faith, they like watering down the, the fights we have in this world. They, they just think like, a, it's like, it's like mm, in Jesus' name, victory. No, 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 no. Life is not like that. I, I, they, just, they just make it easy. Have you ever seen believers just making it easy like that? 
Make it easy like that. They just make it easy like, uh, you know, you know, Satan came to me and I just said with my small finger, get away, Satan, and, and he left. <laughs> it's not like that. In fact, Paul is telling Timothy, he says to Timothy, he says, Timothy, be ready. He says, fight the good fight of faith. He says, fight. Yeah. Touch the neighbor and say, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's fight. It, you, you, it, 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 it won't prosper if you fight. Cry, but fight. Complain, but fight. Be depressed, but don't stop fighting. I wish I could talk to you. Are you getting me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch your neighbor and say, fight. You, 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 you have to fight. The situation is getting worse. Fight. The doctors are coming with the bad news. Fight. Because when you fight, God is promising you that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. You have to fight. Shanta, I feel like I'm speaking to somebody in this house. Satan has sucked the power to fight, but I'm bringing back the power to fight that will begin to feel the power that your prayer life will come back, that will begin to speak in tongues, that will begin to put on your pajamas and begin to speak in tongues and say, Satan, you can't have my family, you can't have my children, you can't have my health, I'm not dying but I'm going to live and declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm here to say to you, fight! Touch your neighbor and say you have to fight, you have to fight. We have to fight for your family, we have to fight for your parents, we have to fight for your job, you have to fight for promotion, you have to fight for everything, you have to fight for everything. In this world, there's nothing for Mahala. You must take your sleeves and pull them back and begin to fight because nothing is gonna come, Mahala, and no breakthrough is gonna come just free of charge. But you have to pay the price. Are you from trying to say here? You have to do something, fight with all that you have. Fight with all what you know. Fight with the word of God. Fight with fasting. Fight with prayer. Fight with confessions. Fight with declarations. Fight with proclamation. Fight with everything. Use every weapon. Fight walking up and down. Fight with exercise. Fight with good health. Fight with diet. Fight with everything. Whatever it needs for you to fight. Fight! Are you from trying to say to you, if I say fight, 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 if there are some people that you have to delete from your phone, fight, delete some people. If you have to block some people on your phone, block some people, block some people, fight, do whatever that you need to do in the name of Jesus and no weapon. Sit down. Now look this. He says, just, he says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue. Now this is what he, he's saying. He's saying every tongue. The biggest weapon on earth is tongue. There's no country that goes to war with other country. Without the tongue. When Russia and Ukraine are going to fight, they did not just boom. It was said they had to be ready. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? If U.S. is to fight with China, it will be declared. There's no international war that will take place unless these ones were criminals. <laughs> I mean the, the legit war. You see? It will be said. So if you can change what is said, <laughs> you can 
turn. You can turn the results around. Or well, let me make an example. If the president of a certain country saying they are fighting with whatever country, if somebody can go and mediate, he can change the words. Because the words are changed, then the, com the, the consequences of people dying are also changed. Lives are also saved. With tongue, you can save lives. And with tongue, you can destroy lives. So God says here, the tongue that rises against you in judgment, not in blessing. In other words, the tongue is rising to judge your life. It's rising to curse your life. Then God says, do not sit down and relax. Engage. Engage. Ah. You don't know how many times at ICU I had to say, shut up, to the devil. He says, I'm dying. I said, where? <laughs> but how do you know it's the devil? It's amazing. The devil is very, is very smart. He will use your own thoughts to speak to you. Did you hear what I said to you? He will use what? Yeah. Satan is very smart. Yeah. Don't ever think that you're going to hear something big from the outside. You're going to die. No, 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 no. From outside. No. It will be, it, 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 it's like, it's you who's thinking, but in real case, it's him who's talking. Sometimes we say, this is what I think, but really it's not us. It's borrowed, no, it's not even borrowed, it's enforced thoughts. So are you hearing me? If somebody says that I'm going to kill myself, who in, a, in his right mind can say, Nobody kills himself until Satan has hijacked your thoughts. Your thoughts are hijacked. Are you hearing me? Yeah, somebody can say, no, it will never happen to me. I will never kill myself. There are those who have been buried a long time ago who said they will never. The issue, to say that you will never and not know what to fight against does not help. Okay, let me make an example. Let me make an example. The most sweetest person, very sweet, very sweet, you know, very sweet person. If you can get that person to a certain level of rage and anger, do you know that sweetest people kill people? One of the things that shocked me, okay, when I tell stories, I've finished preaching. <laughs> One of the things that shocked, that shocked me when I went to prison, I used to preach in prison, like Portsmouth Prison, you know, I would preach there. And, and the power of the Spirit, you know, I mean, seeing um, these uh, prisoners and inmates rolling down under the power of the Holy Spirit, it was, it was romantic, no, powerful, yeah, very powerful. Now, now, look, um, you have to understand that if you cannot, if you cannot engage this with the word of God, then you have lost already. This is where we lose the, I forgot what I was going to say, what I was talking about. You know, huh? what I was going about? Huh? Okay, yes. In prison, I found the nicest guys. My God, I mean nice. No, if I say nice, I mean really from the heart. I don't, I don't mean like personality. You could, you could feel this guy is a very nice person. But you don't understand how he's behind bars. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It's really not bad people, people who do bad things. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, that's why mothers are shocked. They said, not my boy, not my boy, because really, not my boy. But your boy has killed five people. So in this life, there are issues. This is what Jesus Christ says. No matter who you are, no matter how good you are, no matter how generous, how great you are, he says, guard your hearts. Jesus says, guard your hearts. He says, because in the heart are issues of life. In the heart are issues. People don't just kill, it's issues. People don't just rape, it's an issue to be dealt with. People don't just become criminals, it's an issue. After every behavior, there's an issue. And the issue has taken over the heart. Are you hearing that? If you feel sad, you, do, you don't just feel sad. You, you don't just like, you know, I don't know when I wake up, I feel sad and I feel, then in, at 12, I feel very happy. Then at night, I, <laughs> at night, I feel like jumping over the roof and calling everybody. It's, 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 it's you see? <laughs> there, there, there's issue. There are issues. But issues, travel and get effective through thoughts. By dealing with thoughts, you can sort many issues. Do you know that you can think yourself into depression? I mean you thinking yourself into depression. Yeah, you're going and you feel you are going, you're thinking you're going, you're going straight to depression. Yes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You can, you can think yourself, it's, 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 you, you, you can't think yourself until you, you lose your mind, until you need pills to balance yourself. You understand that? But the word of God gives us power. And then God says to Joshua, this book of the law, you know, he says you must think, you must meditate on it day and night. He says when you do that, you shall have victory. Victory is assured through controlling the thoughts through the word of God or by the word of God. That's how we get victory. Yeah, Satan says we are useless. You see, you see how you are? See, I'm the, I'm the head and not that. The Bible did not say you must feel that you are the head. It said you are the head. In, what, in whatever circumstance you, where you are, you are the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it, you have been declared. Huh? You have been what? Yeah, you have been declared the head. You did not work for it. That's what he has made you to be. And you don't have to feel it. Yeah, this feeling business is very problematic. Especially for many believers. You know, uh, Feeling and feeling and feeling. And some pray when they feel like praying. We don't pray because we feel. <laughs> we pray because it's a discipline. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just pray. You don't even, you, do, you don't, listen, you pray even when you don't feel what you are saying. It's like, uh, you know, you ever seen children when they play in the, in the water, they in the water, something like that. You just feel like, a little, you still have to do it. You still have to do it. Are you hearing that? It's not about feeling. It's a what? It's a discipline. That's, that's how we, 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 we are. Okay, Wait, where's my thing? Okay. So, um, amen.
a powerful word that was. I trust you were blessed as I was. To all our members who would like to send their tithes and offering, feel free to do so on the details stated on the screen. Also, to our fellow saints that would like to contribute to the work of the kingdom, you can do so on the details stated on the screen. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Stay blessed.